Okay, so let's first review the concept of torque that you've taken in mechanics before. Uh, so let's say you have a revolving door and the door is uh, allowed to rotate about the z-axis. The center of the door is attached to an axis that can rotate. And uh, the door exists in this picture in the yz plane. And let's say you apply a force on it at this point. Maybe you get a rope and tie it here and then pull on the rope with a certain force with an angle 90 degrees with the y-axis like as shown here. So we want to try and calculate the torque due to this force that's being applied on the door. So the torque, the definition of the torque, it's the, the radius vector from the origin to the point of where the force is acting crossed into the force vector. So in this particular picture, the R vector points from the origin to this point. So it can, we can write it as a magnitude times a, vector, a unit vector in the, J, in, the J, in the y direction. And the force in this particular orientation is in the minus i direction, and it has a certain magnitude. So we can write r and f. So you get r in the j hat, and f in the minus i hat direction. So when you put those back into the formula for the, um, you get a vector that points in the k direction, because if you take the cross product between j and minus i, you get k hat. So the torque turns out to be RF in the k-hat direction. So the torque vector points perpendicular to both the R and the F vectors. So what if you apply the, uh, um, a force, for instance, by putting a rope at this point on the other side of the door and try to apply the force in this direction, opposite the, the other force? Uh, what would the torque be due to this force? Well, the R is just the opposite of the previous R and the force is the opposite of the previous force so you have a minus and a minus so you should get exactly the same result so the r now can be written as minus r j hat and the force is now in the i direction you can write the force as f in the plus i hat direction and r as r minus j hat now when you take minus j hat crossed into i hat you get also k hat the same as before so torque turns out to be exactly the same because it's trying to make the object rotate in exactly the same way. Now what if you put both forces acting? So put a rope here and put a rope here and pull with this particular force and this force in the other direction. What would the total torque be? Add the, two, the torque due to both forces and you get the torque is twice the value. And this picture shows you if you put your thumb along the direction of the torque vector then the fingers will point in the direction that the object wants to rotate. When you put a force pulling this way and this way, the object will want to rotate this like that. So your, if you put your thumb in the direction of the torque vector, the fingers will, will be oriented or pointing in the direction of the object wants to rotate. This is in general true. So you can use that also when we start to talk about uh, currents and torques due to currents in a magnetic field. And the torque depends on the angle that the force is being applied. So if you apply the force at some arbitrary angle theta, then the magnitude of the torque is Rf sine theta, so it depends on the angle. If you put the angle to be zero degrees, then there's no torque, because of course this force does not want to make the object rotate, so it's not tending to rotate the object when the angle is zero. The torque is maximum when you have angle 90 degrees and anywhere in between 0 and 90 degrees you have an intermediate value of the torque. 